not for calamity, to give you a future and hope. Now then when you call upon me and come and pray to me, and I will listen to you, and you will seek my face when you search for me with all your heart, I will be found of you, declares the Lord, and I will restore your fortunes, and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you, declares the Lord. And I will bring you back to the place where I've sent you into exile. Today, I'd like to talk to you about when God orchestrates uh, an event. Father, we thank you, God, for everything that you have done thus far. Now, Master, we ask that your preaching spirit let it rest on me, God, that I may proclaim the things that you have spoken in my spirit uh, for your people. Um, God, we thank you for everything and all things. Open up our hearts and our minds that we might be able to receive the word uh, that you will plant today on fresh ground. Prayerfully, Lord, we expect for you to move in a magnificent, marvelous way. We thank you, God. Uh, in Jesus' perfect name, let us all say, Amen. 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 You may be seated. When God orchestrates a plan and event, um, we look at um, what God does. Sometimes it may feel as if it is a um, a hardship. It feels like we've been picked on, or we've been we've been bullied, or, or something. But it's just like parenting. Uh, for all those that have parents or children, um, sometimes when we do things that go against what the parent has said, there's a discipline that comes along with it. Um, sometimes it looks like go to your room. Sometimes it looks like give me that thing that you like so much. Um, and it's not because they despise you. It's because they're trying to re correct a behavior um, so that you don't constantly walk in this. Um, God does the same thing when he deals with the ones that he loves. He, he corrects us. The word of God says that he chastens, chastises. Uh, those that he loves. Um, so God uses, utilizes things that may feel um, to us um, as uh, distinctive pain, um, but because he's trying to push you um, from away from harm. So sometimes pain is an, uh, an encouragement. Sometimes pain is the thing that pushes you into progress because without it, we stay stuck in the sin that we were living in. Um, our parents, they do that and they have done that. We do it now um, so that you don't stay stuck in the sin, so that you learn um, how to be effective adults, uh, young adults, uh, how to become what God has, has gone, gone to birth in you. But if no one loves you enough, they would allow you to stay in that place that is obviously no good for um, your well-being. Um, so when God was looking at um, the children um, that he exiled, the word exile says that I move you from one habitation and I put you into another place that is not yours, that you are foreigner to. And I place you in some form of captivity so that you are restrained. So you don't have the same liberties that you had when you were in your own place. Now you have to come into a place and abide by rules that were not created by you, not governed by you. And you had no say so in them, but you're in a place um, where you can be held captive. God has sent um, the children that he loved into captivity um, because he was trying to protect them. Uh, this was not the first time that these children had been sent to exile to Babylon. It wasn't the first time when you and I got disciplined because of the same thing that we were doing over and over again. What happened is we just got too old and moved out. <laughs> and the reach of our parents couldn't get us too much. But the hand of God is always there. So this was not the first time that they had been moved from their place of comfort and moved into a place where they were uncomfortable and they had to wait on God. They had to wait on God. Um, when you look at the entire um, text, God does something uh, remarkable in the text when we deal with verses um, 11 through 14. He says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Um, doesn't it make your heart burn knowing that God has a plan designated design for you? Um, that your future, even though it may look and appear like somebody else, it is specifically tailored, handcrafted uh, for you. Um, God had enough uh, concern about you, enough care for you um, to, make a, 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 to make a blueprint that fit you and you alone. Um, he sat down from being God uh, to be Father for a moment um, so that he could create, dedicate some time so that your future um, was not uh, going to be uh, produced on your situations or your circumstances, that your future was going to be predicated on what God had declared uh, would be for you. 
So he makes this statement um, to the children, the prophets, um, the priests, and all of the elders that had been exiled um, under the leadership or lordship of Neva, uh, Kaneva. He makes this declaration to them at the end of the letter to give them some hope. If your parents or if we uh, were at our job and our, our, the boss says, I'm going to lay you off for two weeks, but I'm going to bring you back, back to the exact same place that you left off. But I'm going to have to lay you off for right now because there's some things that are going on with you and everybody else. And if I keep you here, you're going to ruin the whole company. Um, but I need to bring you back because you are vital to the company. Um, so while you're off uh, being, being um, sitting and thinking about why I removed you, uh, be productive. Be proactive. Um, don't complain. Don't murmur. Um, don't, don't, don't have a pity party. Uh, don't find somewhere else to go because I'm going to bring you back here. Wouldn't it be amazing if everybody that we dealt with says, you know what, I'm going to leave you for a season, but I'm going to come back. I'll be back when you're ready for me. But right now, you can't deal with the truth that I have because you're still immature. But when you get to the level, I'll make sure that I'll come back for you and I'll promote you and bring you right back to the place where we left off. We don't have to start over again. We Amen. just will continue on the journey that we were going on. God told the people that he had put in exile, oh, don't be too concerned about where you are right now. Amen. Uh, don't focus your attention on why me, why me. Um, don't focus your complaints on the issues, on the, on the living conditions that are not conducive to your survival. Don't focus on not having your personal items. Focus on doing four things. Focus on doing four things, and he gave them out to him. When we were looking in the text, he gave them four things uh, to do. He said in verse number five, he said, build houses and live in them. Mm. While you're in a foreign country, in a foreign land, under, under the leadership, the lordship, under the captivity, build houses and live in them. Then he told them, I also need you to plant, uh, plant vineyards and eat of the produce. Mm -hmm. And then he told them that I also need you to get for wives and get husbands and your sons and daughters, give them wives and give them husbands so that you don't uh, de uh, decrease, so that, you're, you're, that you don't become a small bunch in this whole entire nation. He said, I need you to do these four things. And then the last one, he said, I need you to pray. Amen. I don't need you to ask me why. I don't need you. I don't need you Say to petition to me to bring you out. I, I don't need Say you to uh, to question my ability as being God. I need you to pray, and specifically, I need you to pray for the place that I sent you to. Amen. When was the last time that you had the the um, the umption to pray for a place that you are uncomfortable in? Mm. Um, God said, I need you to pray for this place, um, exactly where I have set you. I need you to pray for the welfare. Of this place because if you pray for the welfare of this place, it's going to bless you. Amen. So he says, I need you to do these four things. He said, I need you to be housed, build houses because um, I need you to have security. I need you to be able to be in this place where I've sent you as an as a, um, as a outcast, as a foreigner. Um, I need you to be in this place and have security around you. Um, build houses. Otherwise, I need you to have some equity. Uh, some investment in this property, in this real estate. And when you're invested in it, you'll take care of it. And you're looking at it a little differently because you'll feel like even though you're an outsider, you feel like you're part of the community. He so, so he says, I need you to learn to be a part of the community. Be a, a, an, an effective um, prisoner in exile. Um, because if you become a good prisoner, he may make you a uh, trustee. Amen. You may get some liberties um, that everybody else uh, that did not come from me would not sent here by me that, that you might get if you learn to be uh, to blend in and not to complain. He said, build, a, um, build some houses and, and live in them. And when we build houses, we have to come together mm -hmm. uh, because uh, uh, they were not constructors or contractors that you can hire out and say, build it. If you wanted some place to live, you have to get out there and cut wood yourself. Amen. You wanted a place to, get, to live, you have to plan, uh, plot out the land and and mark your space. You have to do all of that by yourself. Uh, along with the folks that you recruited. Which usually look like your family members. Um, so God says that even in the place that you have exiled. I'm going to have a, make you a community. I'm going to make the ones that you had an issue with. I'm going to make y'all come together. Because without shelter we all out in the, in the wilderness by ourselves. So he said the cousin that you didn't like. The aunt that you didn't like. The brother that you didn't like. Your mother and father that you didn't get along well with. I'm going to make all y'all come together. Because he is the blacksmith. You are the carpenter. Amen. He knows how to use the nail. He knows how to read the measurements. And if you don't learn to work together. He said you will have no house to dwell in. So he Amen. said I need you to build houses. And live in them. 
occupy them. Mm -hmm. uh, treat them like the house that you are in when you are in your own land, in your own mm -hmm. place. Live and occupy in them. Then he says, oh, it's important um, that you are nourished. He said, I need you to plant vineyards. Mm -hmm. um, I don't need you to depend on them mm -hmm. to bring you food. I need you to utilize what you had when you were out there in the world, in your native land. I need you to take that and do it here. Uh, God could have been saying, um, they don't know how to plant. Mm -hmm. And I need you to utilize the skills that I gave you to show them um, how they can produce products on their own. Um, because if they can produce fruit on their own, uh, they may not have to come pillage your village. Amen. Uh, they may not have to come and steal uh, from your lands if they know how to produce the same fruits that you're selling. Mm -hmm. um, so if you learn as a community that we have to survive together, even though I don't like you, we got to survive together, hand and arm, shoulder right. to shoulder, back to back. If we ever learn how to do that as a people, mm -hmm. um, God says that we'll see him come back. Mm -hmm. And he'll bless. He says, I need you to plant vineyards, uh, plant gardens, and eat the things um, that you produce. Don't go sell them. Amen. Don't go make a convenience store out of what I'm, I'm trying to make sure that you survive. Amen. So that you have the nourishment, to have the substance within you um, to survive the duration of the time that I'm going to uh, send you into captivity. Um, have we ever been to a point, have we ever been in a situation um, where it felt like, God, you're picking on me. I've done this, I've done that, and God, and here I am. I've said yes to this, I said yes to that, God, and I didn't want to go, but here I am. I'm out there by myself. When I go look for help, there's no help. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm calling on folks, nobody answers the phone. The favor that I glint out, nobody returns. Amen. The favor, God. What is it about me? Sometimes when we're in a position that it feels uncomfortable, it's not because God is punishing you, but it's because God is sometimes trying to get you in a place of isolation so he can really deal with you. Um, because it's difficult to hear when things are going good. Mm -hmm. When we feel like we don't need God. Uh, but as soon as right. things start to fall under, when things start to collapse around us, when, when opportunity starts to, to cease to exist, as soon as the ones that we call friends start picking up the phone mm -hmm. and start unfriending us and start saying things about us, mm -hmm. now i got nobody else to depend on, so I have to learn to depend on God. Mm -hmm. In isolation, God is the loudest thing in the room, even while he has a small, still quiet voice. He is the loudest thing in the room. And we have to intentionally uh, turn ourselves toward his direction. He says, I'm going to intentionally place you in, 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 um, in a predicament, in a, in a, in a camp, in, in exile, because I need you to hear me. Because I've been dealing with you for so long. I love you to death. Amen. But I've been dealing with you and we've been dealing with the same issue. Whenever uh, you get to a place, uh, Jerusalem, whenever you get to a position where you feel like you don't need me, you turn your back on me. Um, you, stop, uh, you stop worshiping me and you start idolizing the things that the world is doing. Um, so, every night, so, so when that occurs, I've got to bring you back to your right mind. Mm -hmm. Which means I'm going to have to cut some things out of your, out of, off of your plate. I'm going to have to remove you from the world because the world is about to kill you. But because I love you so much, I don't mind spending some time with you, isolating you so that you can be strengthened again and be reminded of who I am as your God. So he says, I need you to plant. I need you to build your house. I need you to plant. Then I need to make sure that you are productive, that you, that you increase, um, that while you're here, that you have wives and children, and your, your children's have wives and that you can become productive um, so that way in this isolation camp um, you can teach them uh, what it is to serve God um, because you don't have all of the abundance the distraction that you had out there now you just have us and God so if you can teach your babies to live without <laughs> imagine what they will become when they have uh, if you can teach them to, if you can teach them to, to survive on um, just a little bit. Imagine what they can do when they get a whole lot. They, they won't spend it. They won't squander it. Um, they will know what it looks like to come out of eating pork and beans. Yeah. Um, because they, they learn how God uh, can even sustain you in things that don't seem appealing to your appetite. Um, so he says, I need you to take and make, make sure you get families. Um, create families. Um, show them how to plant. Show them how to build. And that way, when I bring you out of this place, you're not confused anymore. Um, you're not distracted by the things that the world is doing. Uh, you, have your, you have your blinders on, and you mm -hmm. seek my face, and, you, and you're searching after me. And if you search after me, he said, you'll find me. Right. But 
But then the most powerful thing I like about the text is that whenever God puts us in a position where we're uncomfortable, often the last thing we want to do is pray for the position that we're in. Mm-hmm. I'd rather pray, God, you get me out of it, not God, that you bless the people that have me in this awkward position. Mm-hmm. I'd rather for you to pray and remove me from it so I don't have to deal with it anymore. Um, but God says, no, I don't need you to pray for me to come down and rain havoc on, um, on, Heza, um, on uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Uh, I need you to pray that Nebuchadnezzar does well. <laughs> Amen. I need you to pray that he has strength. Amen. I need you to pray that he has health, that he is wise. Mm-hmm. I need you to pray for everything that is in this community because you are part of this community. I don't need you to tear down the thing that I placed you in the middle of. I need you to stand there with your hand on the wall and holding the wall up and mm-hmm. asking God Say to it. keep the enemy out of there because not only are you there, but the captives are there. Amen. He said, I need you to pray for the welfare, the, 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 the goodness. I need you to pray for benefits um, that you need from me. I need you to pray on them. When was the last time that you honestly prayed prayed for those folks that got on your last nerve? Uh, Pray for those folks that ran off uh, with the money that they said, you let me borrow it, I'll bring it back to you. Mm -hmm. Two days. Uh, When was the last time that you prayed for the ones that you know they said something about you and it was obvious because you got the the proof right in your hand and the world saw it. Mm -hmm. When was the last time that you sincerely asked God uh, to pray the same blessing that's on you Mm -hmm. that you prayed to fall on them? Mm -hmm. He says, I need you to do this. I need you to do these four things. And then when you do these four things, um, you'll find out uh, that I am God. Amen. That I am God. And I often, uh, um, in the midst of chaos, calamity, confusion, there are always going to be those folks that say, well, God told me to tell you. <laughs> you have to be careful of those folks that say, God told me to tell you. And God ain't told you anything. <laughs> say it. Say it. God has not spoke to your spirit. Mm-hmm. Um, because when God tells other folks to tell you something, God does something to your spirit to be able to Amen. receive that, whatever Amen. it right. is. Um, he said, be careful of those that come uh, with their dreams mm-hmm. and saying that I said and I did not send them. They do it in their name. Not, that I did not send them. You be That's careful right. of the folks that are still right. in, in the camp that call that call themselves prophets and priests. You right. be careful of the ones that look like uh, sheep, but they're wolves in sheep clothing. Um, you be careful of the ones that say, I'm going to pray for you because you don't know who they're praying to. You Amen. be careful of the ones that you tell all your business to because not everybody that smiles at you mean you any good. So you be careful and don't listen to the ones that say, God told me to tell you. Because God said, I didn't tell them to tell you anything. Amen. Because I'm God. If I need to have a conversation with you, I can do it. Amen. And I don't have to go through somebody to send you a word. All I have to do is right. right. sit you down right. and send you a word right. from heaven right. all by myself. Well, he said, be careful. That's right. Don't listen to the prophets who are in the midst of you and the divers that deceive you, which is, the, um, which is sorcery on the folks that palm readers and all those kind of people. Just be careful them because they don't represent me. Whenever God orchestrates an event, know that God thinks the entire thing out. Um, Know that he's prepared uh, um, for the thing that's going to upset you and want to offend you, but God is a repair of the breach. And that every heartache that God can sue, every pain God can mend, but we have to trust God whenever we are where we are. It was amazing that that young man that was 10 years old, I don't know what he was singing, but whatever he was singing, it dis- disturbed the spirit that was in his captive um, that they let him go. Uh, it's amazing that whenever we get, the, uh, get, get, get become so courageous um, and, and sometimes become so, uh, I don't know, uh, insane, um, uh, uh, that we'll do the thing that we do not realize is the thing that God says that we ought to do first. Amen. And this boy, 10 years old, yeah. had enough spiritual common sense Amen. to say, you know what, I can't get myself out of these ropes. I can't get myself out of these handcuffs. I can't drive a car. I don't have a phone. But what do I got? He said, you know what, I remember Hezekiah had a son. That's right. He said, you know what, I remember that... Um, that Richard Smallwood had a song. Uh, I, I remember all of those praises when I was at church with my mama and my granddaddy. When I was there, that they had a song, and every time they sang, somebody got free. Um, so as I've been handcuffed and shackled and 
thing that I need the most, yeah. I need to get free today. Yeah. So he's yeah. saying, in your praise, yes. Yes, it is. is a breakthrough. Yes. Imagine how much we got left on the table because we're so afraid to just go ahead and praise God. Amen. Because I'm in the place where I see people looking at me and I don't want to praise God because I don't want nobody to think that I'm crazy. Um, but they think you're crazy anyway because you're in the place looking for a God that you have not physically um, seen. So you might as well go ahead and praise him anyway, anyhow, uh, while you have the breath in you. He said, don't listen to those that are in your camp that say they represent me. Say it. Because they don't even know me. From the get go, but they know of me, but they don't have a relationship Amen. With me, uh, like you do. Whenever God orchestrates an event, He plans it out um, completely. Psalms 37 um, says this The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and He delighted in His ways. Though He fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his hand. If God has put you in a position that seems like, God, this ain't for me. If God has ordered you, which means that he's already in the previous conversation said, you're going to have to go through this and go through that to get here. Uh, if those orders have already come down from heaven, uh, do not be afraid. Because God is already there with you. Um, he said that you might stumble, but you will not fail. Mm -hmm. uh, which means that I'm going to have some heartbreak, but I will not be totally uh, disrupted that I give up and quit. Um, you have to know that if God orchestrates this thing, uh, exile these folks, uh, that he won't let them fail. That he's got everything all worked up and wrapped up. That he's thought of every intricate detail that there could be. He set the heavens in a certain time, set the sun in a certain time, set the rain in a certain time, so they're, they're seeds. Paul says one water, uh, uh, one water, one plants, but God gives the increase. Um, so we have to know that if God is orchestrating this, that God has worked everything out in our favor. Acts chapter 5, verses 30, uh, 38 through 39. So in the presence, in this present case, I say unto you, stay away from these men. And let them alone, for this is a plain or action is of men. It will be overthrown. But if it is of God, uh, you will not be able to overthrow them, or else you may even be found fighting against God. Acts describes um, uh, Peter and the apostles uh, preaching, the, preaching Jesus in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the temples in the cities. And the, the Pharisees and the priests, they were upset because the marvelous things that the spirit of Jesus was still doing while he was dead. And one of the, the, the council members, uh, while they had him in bondage, he tried to talk some sense into them, tell them, wait a minute now. There were some other folks that came, um, said that they were doing mighty works of God, but they died. Um, there were some other folks that came, said that they were going to heal and do all of this, and they did a few things. Uh, but then they passed away and they had the rest of their followers went. Um, but these guys, now, if they be from God, uh, you better watch your step. Mm -hmm. Because if it's from God, there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. If God orchestrated this event, there is nothing that you can do about it. You can think about it all night long. You can gather all of your research together, spend all of your money, gather all of your friends and family members, mm -hmm. send out as much media as you want to. But if God says that Barack Obama should have been president, there is yeah. nothing that you can do. If God says that this man is supposed to be the king and the king, the priest, if God says that this man is supposed to be the next this, that, and that, and other, there is nothing that you can do. If God says that this woman is supposed to be the next CEO. If she's supposed to own this business, she's supposed to raise these kids. Uh, there is nothing that the system can do. If God already said that, Say it. it shall be so. And then he gave another wise warning. He said, because you mess around and you be fighting with God. Mm -hmm. uh, we do know that if we want to pick on anybody, it should not be the creator of everybody. Amen. And we want to have a problem with maybe um, Peter or somebody. Okay, we won't, but not Peter's dad. Amen. We all know that when you come into the neighborhood, if the neighborhood is mostly family, mm. that's not the neighborhood you want to have an issue with. Because there's only one way in. There's only one way out. Amen. So he said, it's best that you leave these guys alone because if you're dealing with God, mm -hmm. you will 
fair. Whenever God orchestrates an event, mm-hmm. even though we go through the, 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 um, the difficulties in that, even though when he promotes us to be ministers and priests and prophets and tells us to be evangelical and and gives us all of these gifts and abilities to do, even with the hardship that come along with that God has already prepared um, for your failure and he knows how to lift you up and encourage your spirit so that you don't give up. But you have to know that it is God. Mm -hmm. Because if you think it's your doing, uh, then you just left God out the equation. Mm -hmm. But if you give it to God, we know that God said that he would not let, let him fail, that he shall not be cast down, that the Lord will uphold him uh, with his hands. But here it is. So, so, so he says, you got to do these four things. Uh, build houses, um, get some food. Um, I, I need you to um, take wives, have children so you don't decrease. Then I need you to pray immensely um, for your captives so that you not only not only you pray for them, throw hot coal on their heads because of your prayers. If God, Jesus said to pray for your enemies. Um, not only do you do that, but it also the prayer comes back and blesses you. So I need to do these four things um, because out of that, I'm going to do something because of your obedience. The Bible says that obedience is better than sacrifice. So I might as well be obedient to God and do what God declares that I should do than give God all of the money that I have, keep paying my tithe, and I haven't done anything that God told me um, to do. I might as well be like the woman and just give God everything and expect God to do nothing for me, but know that he will because he sees how my heart is. And he says to them, um, whenever God orchestrates an event, there's always a timeline involved. Now, if I'm going to move you from here, there's a period of time in which I'm going to bring you back here, he said in verse number 10, For thus says the Lord, when 70 years has been completed for Babylon, um, God says, I'm going to sit you in exile for 70 years. Mm-hmm. I'm going to allow some of the folks that have been there, just like he did the children of Israel when they were walking around the wilderness, I'm going to allow some of the ones that complained and didn't want to accept me for being God, um, that didn't want to accept the fact that they've now been free, that they wanted, they'd wanted, rather have been in Pharaoh's house still eating good than out mm-hmm. here in, in, in liberty. Um, for, uh, I'm going to let them die off. I'm going to let them die off because I don't want them to contaminate the next generation. Amen. So when 70 years has passed, he said, I will visit you and fulfill my good words uh, to you and I will bring you back uh, to the place. Um, for I know the plans that I have for you, um, declares the Lord. Plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you future and hope that you, when you call on me and pray, I will listen um, to you. Whenever God orchestrates this thing that we call life, and he puts us in positions that may seem too big for us to understand. Um, God said that if, ever you, if when you include me in this, that, and the other, uh, you will find me. Whenever you get to the point where you start searching your heart and looking to see if God is there, he said that you will find me. So you and I have to be in the position of always assuming that we are in exile. Um, because when you're by yourself, that's when you're the most powerful. Powerful because you don't have nobody else to depend on but me. Um, so if we assume that we're always in this thing uh, by ourselves and it's just God, uh, the more we'll learn to depend on God and the more God will expose to us and the more we can be able to get to the place where God said that we're supposed to be. Um, but when we act as if we got it all together and we don't need nobody else, um, we don't need your prayers, we don't need your support, we don't need your help, we don't need your opinion, we don't need your advice, um, we don't need your commitment, we don't need nothing from you. That is when we have gotten too big and God says, I need to call you back home now. I need to bring you back because evidently you done got too grown for your britches and I need to bring you back and straighten you out and let you know that I am God. And because I am God, um, I love you so much that I will not allow you to, 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 to be your own worst enemy. Amen. He said, I'm going to bring you back. Seventy years has to go by in order for me to fulfill that. Seventy years is a powerful number in the Bible before there were a lot of things that occurred after 70 a lot of proclamations were done after 70. 70, a number that can't be divided by itself. Takes two, two um, what is that, non-denominational kind of numbers or some two uneven numbers to make 70 happen. 70 is a powerful number when you look into um, the Bible. He said, I'm going to take 70 years. God, but you know God. God can do it in five minutes. Amen. He doesn't need time. God rules time. God Amen. is time. Amen. But because he needed to, he gave them a, a piece of hope. A, a glimmer of the future, uh, they were waiting for the 70. That's right. And while the 70 was on its way, we were going to be doing what God said to do. We were going to be building and planting and having relationships mm-hmm. and praying. And that's all I'm going to do. Build and plant. Relationship and prayer. Build, plant, 
relationships and pray. And he said, as long as you're doing that, when you when the 70 years have have have, have elapsed, you will find me because you've been searching for me all this time. And I knew you were searching for me. That's why I was here looking at you. Say, look at my people. Go, my people. Go. Chanting, chanting and saying, they're going to make it. They're going to make it. We can overcome because he knew what was in you. But you have to get to a position where you solely depended on God. Um, solely dependent on God. He declared that I know the plans that I have for you. Declare the Lord plans for welfare and not for calamity to give you a future and hope. Then when you call on me and pray and I will listen, you will seek and find me when you search with your whole heart. I will be found, declares the Lord, and I will restore. A lot of us are we in the waiting on the restoration process. God, I've done everything that I can. God, I'm empty. Lord, I need to be restored. I need you to do more than restore me, God. I need you to take this old thing away from me and make me something brand new. I don't need any of the old things to hang on to me. I might look like the same person, but God, I need all the habits to be gone. I need all of my bad thinking to be gone. I need you to restore me, God, into a place that you are satisfied with what I am. And if you're satisfied, then can't no other person tell me any other thing. Because as long as I please God, uh, pleasing man does not mean anything um, to me, because if I can please God, then I'm going to please man any time. But I've got to be in a position where, God, you have restored me. He said, I'll restore you and bring you fortune. God said that everything that you left over there, you thought that if it was not accruing, no interest. I'm going to bring you the interest back, too, because I'm that kind of God. I'm a fair kind of banker. I'm not going to rob you of your dividends or your stock, everything that you have invested in. Then when you get back to it, I'm going to show you how much it has accrued interest and give it to you because you have been building and planting and relationships and praying. You have been building and planting and relationships and praying while I was orchestrating this event around you, while I was being the maestro and say tenor sing, alto sing, soprano sing, blow the saxophone, play, play the drums, string the strings. While you were doing all of that, you were in the choir. You never left because the songs were too difficult. You stayed in your place even though you didn't like where we were going. He said, while you were there, he said, I fulfilled everything that I would fulfill, that I declared um, that I would fulfill because if anybody knows what's best for you, it's me. Mm -hmm. That's right. If anybody knows what's best for you, it's me. So what do we do when we're in a position that seems uncomfortable? We've been treated unfairly. Nobody knows who I am. Nobody seems to give me a break. Um, it seems like the more I do, the, 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 worse I, the worse it is for me. What do we do? We ask God, is it you? And then God may say, it's me. And then the next question ought to be, well, what should I do? Amen. And then God will say, build, plant, relationships, and pray. And he said, all of that, when you get down to the end of it, Watch me do what I said I'm going to do. I'm going to restore everything that you think that you left behind. I'm going to restore it. Um, but you have to trust and know that I am the one responsible uh, for what you're enduring now. God says that if you never believe that I am the author of uh, good fortune, that I have created everything around you so that you have... Uh, and expect it in that you have a, have hope that you have future then you'll never believe that I am God mm -hmm. but if you believe that I'm capable and qualified to do all that then you know that I am God uh, but you need to find in yourself search your heart and see God what is it that you require of me God required the loyalty and the commitment of the children that he exiled mm -hmm. uh, to Babylon God required their communication um, to be um, yes God yes God Yes, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. God requires the same thing from you. He requires that you be loyal to him, that he's loyal to you. He requires that your communication be yes, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. So if you don't want to be in a position where God moves you from your place of being comfortable and places you in a, in a camp um, where you're unfamiliar with, if you don't want to be isolated and exiled uh, uh, to a foreign land, uh, you, your conversation ought to be yes, God. Mm -hmm. Yes, God. Yes, God. I know, God, that they're doing wrong. But, God, yes, God. Yes, God. Yes, God. Uh, I know that world says that this is okay, but yes, God. Yes, God. Uh, yes, God. Uh, God, I know that they're doing that over there, but yes, God. Uh, yes, God. 
yes gone because I used to get whoopings and I got tired of getting whoopings when I was growing up. So evidently you have to learn from your mistakes. Amen. Um, the children never learn. At that point in time, they had not learned from their mistakes. So God had to do what God does for those that he loves. He isolated them. If you feel like you're in isolation now, it could be, and I won't lie on God, but it could be that God has required and asked of you something to do that you have not done. Amen. And God says he's, he's so peaceful, so patient, so merciful that he said, I will allow you to go out so far. <laughs> Almost till you get to the end. But because I love you back, I love you so much, I'm going to pull you back. Mm-hmm. Because right. everything that you've been praying for me for, I've been had waiting on you, but because you haven't done what I've asked you to do. Amen. And I'm still holding it. Because if I give it to you now in the condition that you're in, you're going to mess it up. Amen. So I'm holding it. So he said, children, because I've exiled you, it's not because I don't love you. I've exiled you because I do love you. Amen. And I'll do it again if you get out of hand <laughs> again because I'm God. Amen. But I need Amen. you to understand and um, I need you to learn. So where are you in your life? That it looks like I've been here before. 